Mr. Croucher here, and I'm going to be walking you through how to use your column methods to solve addition. So first things first, always a good idea to have an estimate uh, before you work it out, just so you get a rough idea of what your number might be. Now 357 add 294 might be a bit tricky to try and work out in your head. So I'm going to use my rounding to make 294 300, I'm going to round it up to the nearest 100. Now 357 add 300 is 657. So I can jot that on and we can check how close we were in a moment when we finished. So while we are looking at our column method, I'm also going to show you the physical um, idea so you get an idea of what I'm actually doing for each column. All I've done here is I've put in my hundreds, tens and ones from my first number, 357. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to make sure um, with any addition that I start from my ones column. Now the reason I do that is because I'm going to need um, to do some regrouping and it might get a bit messy if I didn't start my ones. Okay. I'm going to also set out my columns uh, neatly, making sure both of my numbers, uh, all of the digits, are all lined up in the right columns. So important. So I'm going to do that alongside so you can see what's happening. The very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my second number in my columns so you can see what it actually looks like before I add them together. Okay, so the first column I'm going to start in has to be my smallest column. My smallest column is the ones here. So I'm going to add together seven ones and four ones. Um, those of you who already know your number bonds, you'll know that I'm going to need to regroup. Seven ones add four ones makes 11 ones. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in the box below. There we go. I've put my 11 ones in. I'm now going to need to regroup 10 of those ones to make another 10. And there you can see I've got my one in the ones column and I've got my one in the tens column. Now if we look at our column method, this is what it actually looks like. I've got my one digit in the ones column, just here. Now I've put my regrouped 10 underneath because I know I'm going to add it later. Now it doesn't matter really where you put this as long as you understand what's happening here. I need to add this additional 10. So some people put it just above the line, some people put it right at the top. Um, I tend to prefer to put it at the bottom. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to our tens column, uh, which gives me five tens, add nine tens. But I must remember I've got this 10 down here that I need to add. So I'm actually going to do five at nine, which makes 14, and add my extra 10, which makes 15. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So there you have it. I've got my 15 tens. I am now going to regroup 10 of those tens to make 100. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And there we go. I've got my 100 and I've got my five tens. Now on my column method, again, I've got my five in the tens answer box. And I've got my 100 underneath ready to add for later. Now we're on to our last column, and I think those of you who are confident with your number bonds can tell that I'm not going to need any regrouping here. I'm going to do three hundreds, add two hundreds, add my one extra hundred down here, so that's going to be five hundreds, add another hundred, which makes six hundred. And there you have it, after we've done all of our regrouping, um, we've ended up with 600, 5 tens, and a 1. 651. Uh, some people like to cross out once they've used their extra 100 or extra 10 or extra regroup number. Uh, it's completely up to you as long as you understand what's happening and what they're used for. So now I can go back to my sum, and I know that 357 add 294 equals to 651. 
and you can see we were very, very close to our estimate of 657 